Now, 210.4 deals with multi-wire branch circuits. And the rule is on 210.4a is all circuits of a multi-wire branch circuit must originate from the same piano board. I don't know if we have a graphic here, multi-wire. Yes, we do. So this is a graphic of the definition of a multi-wire branch circuit for single phase. And here's what it says. Multi-wire branch circuit is a branch circuit with two or more circuit, two or more phase conductors having a voltage between them. So right here, here's line one, line two, there's two. It could be line one, line two, line three. Having a voltage between them, this is 120 from line one to neutral and 120 from line two to neutral. A voltage between them with equal voltage between each phase conductor. Well, between each phase conductor is 240. What do you mean equal voltage? Well, if I had a third phase, then it would be A to B, B to C, A to C, and all of those would be the same <coughs> voltage. So if it was three phase, that would be like a Y system. So that's a multi-wire branch circuit. Oh, so you can use two hots and one neutral. Now, what does that mean? It means you just saved a wire. Instead of running a hot and neutral and a hot and neutral, you just saved the wire. Now, a little problem with anything, Brian? Well, before you move on, if you want to go back to A, because I think it's a really important point, the reason why this rule is relevant, and I think especially people that are new, if you walk on a job site and you have two panels that are side by side, and you've got one space in one panel, you got one space in the other panel, and you're like, oh, I could share a neutral, and I have two spaces. Wow, never thought of it. And, and, this is, and, and if you're not a service person, you may not have seen this a lot. Um, my but, brain is like, what are you talking but about? But I, I, I can assure you, Ryan has seen this many what? times. I know I have. It's crazy. <laughs> so you go to the panel, and, and you're like, uh, there's only one breaker, but I have two circuits sharing a neutral. Where's the other breaker? And you're tracing wires and through a conduit and a junction box and up into another panel, and, and one circuit came out of this panel, and one circuit came out of this panel because both panels are full. And there was one circuit left in each panel. And somebody's very creative, and they got the wire from point A to point B, again, thinking mechanically. Wow. And it worked. Wow. So this rule is a very relevant rule. And, and for the new people, just understand, this is not a mechanical thing here. This is actually a rule. And there's reasons why we want to have these coming out of the same panel. And, and Brian, you and I saw this in a house in Florida. We did. That had two panels next to each other. And they a hooked up the generator. And, uh, and so all the, the branch panel. circuits coming out of one panel, and all the neutrals are going back to the other panel. Yep. Wow. And, and this is my favorite. High. This is my favorite term during class that I, I stress: is do not get creative. Yeah. <laughs> do not get creative. Follow the code. It's one hundred percent a good way to get yourself into trouble and cause extra hazards. Yeah, a lot of creative. people jump right past this rule, but I'll yeah. tell you right now, this is this is something that bears. I jump past it. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. Like, yeah, well, why are we even talking about this? Okay, Joel, you're gonna find. I, I saw this in a nursing home, and a patient was saying uh, there's something wrong. And a breaker tripped. It took them three hours to find where the breaker is, yeah. and it was on a different floor. Yep. And there's neutral sharing, and it's it's a disaster. Okay. It can cause a, a nightmare. All right. Well, and I thought it was going to go good in 210. Not looking good so far. All right. So we know what a multi-wire branch circuit is originating from the same panel. We're going to have a lot about rules of multi-wire branch circuit. That's two hots and a neutral, three hots and a neutral. Let me just give you some of the rules. They all have to come off of a of a a common breaker or a breaker with handle ties, and then you have to uh, group the phase conductors and neutral conductors unless it's obvious. So we, we need to be able to know these three wires or four wires, and, they go, and you can watch it go to a breaker. Not like who knows what's going on. Yes, ma'am. I just have to say that ties back to exactly what we were talking about with that neutral being able to bite you. If they're not able to be grouped together, you can't isolate them together, meaning oh. lock out, tag out together, where you disconnect all phase conductors at the same time. That is the important part about having that group together. Wow. Okay. Let's talk about multi-wire branch circuit. How does it work out? Well, you have line one going to a TV, and you have line two going to a, a hair dryer, and you have a shared neutral. It's, it's called a multi-wire branch circuit. You have to have them. And I like what you just said, Jennifer, that by having them together on the same breaker and handle ties, then you can lock them out and tack them out together. Now, here's what it looks like. TV is a 600 watts. Hair dryer is 1,200 watts. We can do all the math. And so the line one to the neutral is 120, line one, two to the neutral is 120, line one to line two is 240, multi-wire brand circuit, everything is fine. But if for some reason the electrician, the panel in the garage takes the wire off and sees a little spark, 
you've already done that. <clears throat> Second time you see it, like, ooh, no, no, no. First time you're like, oh, interesting. Well, when you had that little spark and you open it up, you change it from a multi-wire branch circuit as demonstrated here to a series circuit. Now, before we get into the math and before we explain how this all works out, you have what Kurt, you have up, no, you have Murphy's Law of a multi-wire branch circuit. <laughs> and that Murphy's Law of a multi-wire branch circuit states that you will always damage the most expensive piece of equipment connected to the multi-wire branch circuit by the square of the value of the product. So if you have a three thousand dollar TV, there's that square have, again. Yeah, there's that square. That's math. I, I hate to drop you guys into math, but we're gonna do the math real quick here. And you, I need to calculate. So you have a three thousand dollar TV, and you have a thirty dollar piece of equipment on a multi wire branch circuit. If there's gonna be a failure, it's gonna what? The, the most expensive piece of equipment will sacrifice itself. The three thousand dollar TV will sacrifice itself to protect the thirty dollar. <laughs> Uh, uh, cook, coffee pot maker, or whatever the case may be, inside there. And it's by the square. So 3,000 squared compared to 30 squared, you can tell which one's going to get destroyed. So the TV is not going to get like a little few. No, it's going to destroy the TV. Now, if it had been a $40 something, $30, well, then, of course, you just press the reset button. It would have been a problem inside there. So that's Murphy's Law of a multi wire branch circuit. Let's take a look at the math, though. Here's what the math says. Okay. If you know that the TV is 24 ohms, because we can do some math, we're not going to do it now, <coughs> and the hair dryer is 12 ohms, because that was a function of the 600 watts, 120 volt rated. We can figure out the resistance. If you know the resistances, now you have a, I'd like to put over here in this graphic here, this would be a 24 ohm resistor here, and that would be a 12 ohm resistor. Well, if you had 24 ohms here and 12 ohms here, you have, you have the voltage Kirchhoff's law, law that voltage of a series circuit is equal to voltage source. So you take 240 volts between the two conductors. Well, that means that the TV voltage and the hairdryer voltage will equal 240. But it's done by the law of proportion. So if I showed here 24 ohms and I showed over here 12 ohms, that means it's going to be one is going to be two parts versus the other or three parts. You can mathematically, it's going to be 160 volts on this particular TV versus 80 volts right there. The TV will go real fast. The people will start moving real quick there for a fraction of a second. Okay, maybe not. Maybe we'll just smoke the TV. Not gonna make the TV <clears throat> go faster, okay? So that's the problem with the multi-wire branch. What's the advantage? I saved the wire. You know what's the other advantage of a multi-wire branch circuit? Do you know who invented the multi-wire branch circuit? I can't who invented it, but who, who probably patented it? Edison. Edison. Because back in New York City, they ran this 120-volt circuit. Watch the movie, The Current of the Wars. They didn't really talk about that. And Edison ran 120 volts DC, 125 volt DC, and he's doing all this other stuff. And then Tesla goes work for Edison. He goes, oh, man, AC Edison, now get out of here. So Tesla goes to the Westinghouse and gets screwed by Westinghouse. But that's a whole other story inside there. So they then start, Westinghouse starts coming up with alternating current and start promoting that. And Edison can only go like, like feet away from the generating power plant. And what they did was they realized, you know what? If we get another voltage and we go multi-wire branch circuit, if you had 10 amps on line one, how many amps is on the neutral line one? 10 amps. The other generator had been what? 10 amps on one? How many neutrals what? 10. But if you get a multi-wire branch circuit and you have one common neutral, 10 amps on one, 10 amps on the other, it gives you how many amps on the neutral? Zero. 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 Guess what happened to your voltage drop? 50% reduction. Now you can go 50% further. Still only like two blocks instead of one block away from the power plant. But hey, listen, an improvement is an improvement. We're not going to sit here and argue. So you have reduced voltage drop. You have a reduced number of conductors, probably a smaller raceway, um, a lower cost everywhere around the bar. But if you happen to open that neutral, you wipe out Murphy's Law Square, you know, whole thing. Eric. Yeah, this is a, a real good reason why you're only allowed to put one neutral under a screw. And because... we're going to talk about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. So understanding this concept is the basis for us to follow on. So what the heck are we even talking about? Multi-wire branch circuits. It is it's an Edison. Yeah. That's right. It's an Edison circuit. So going back to my graph, okay, multi-wire circuits. Oh, so I originate from the original panel, yep. and I'm explaining what a multi-wire branch circuit is, and I'm saying the problem with the multi-wire branch circuit is you can do that. The code permits it. Ryan, were you going to say something? I was going to give a, a practical view of this. So what you're saying is with the neutral danger, I probably don't want to wire an office building with computers with multi-branch circuits this way. Or maybe a laboratory. 
<laughs> Very good point. Right? It might be legal. But, once but... Again, think about this. In today's world, this is different than it was in the 70s when we had incandescent light bulbs and we had heaters and everything was a linear load, right? Today, everything is electronic, right? And so if you start opening neutrals, lifting neutrals, things are a lot more expensive. Well, I'm just going to say from a contractor standpoint, as much as I appreciate what Ryan's saying, you're going to be running multi-wire branch circuits. It's just happening. There's no way you're going into a million plus square foot building in a low bid scenario and you're going to say, I'm going to pull an extra conductor for every single circuit in this entire building and win a bid against somebody that's not. So great idea. Maybe if you have the option, don't do it. But that's not going to be the reality unless service. you work with Eric and if, if you're have work, unlimited if, money. If you're working in, let's say, a service situation or you're doing, service, you're doing a yeah. smaller, maybe not a bid sure. job, but you're doing a smaller job. Sure. You know, you're taking, you know. It is, it, is a, it is a cost factor. You have to sure. stop and go home. Yeah, it's a cost factor. But there's another really important point. If you're dealing in, with office furniture, with office furnishings and partitions, building yep. cubicles, yep. every one that I've seen is wired the bus work inside the office partitions yep. they're all multi-wire and so you have to you have, have to understand multi-wire brand circuits yep. if you're going to put in furniture partitions Agreed. think about it if you follow the code if you do the product according to the code right we're not going to have a problem so we're done that's and for the record, multi-wire branch circuits don't have a problem until electricians show up to work on them. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record. Out. Hey, one guy was working on it. Uh, real quick, and I got to get out of here. Even though I said, okay, we're done. We're not done. Okay, I want to tell my story. One guy was working in a Best Buy. He opened oh. up a neutral in a Best Buy, and it was a multi-wire branch circuit. Yeah. He wiped out $10,000 worth of product. The manager of the store was his buddy, Okay. So what they did was they went ahead and they, they returned all the products slowly to the different ones, and they said it was lightning damage or something like that. So he didn't get charged for it. So the key here is don't be taking neutrals off of a neutral bus. Make you put your amp meter on there at least before you do something like that. All right, let's move on. All right. All right, so now that we know what a multi-wire branch circuit is, the code requires that you have the ability to simultaneously open up the circuit. <coughs> That means that you can put two single pole breakers with a handle tie, or you can use a common trip circuit breaker. But this is an example, Jennifer, you're saying that, well, you can put a lockout tag out on there. The whole key here is that this is a disconnecting means for the multi-wire brand circuit, okay? You can't not use single pole breakers. Uh, but you can use individual single pole breakers. Um, what do we got here? This one is... Each multi branch circuit must have a means to sound just going to face conductor to the point where the branch circuit originates. Okay, we have that graphic. And then we're talking about single pole. Maybe, Mike, here you can show a breaker, two single poles, and a common trip breaker somewhere in there because we can't tell what this is here. So just show the two breakers what we, our choices are besides just the text in there. You guys okay with that, Ryan? Okay. I'll, you might uh, want to change that NMB to a 12 3. Good catch. <laughs> This is 12.3 yeah, right 12, here. To, yeah. And that's 12 gauge, which is one. yellow, right? Yeah, so that should be 12.3. Yeah. Thank you. All right, here's a multi-wire branch circuit. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, multi-wire branch circuit is permitted to supply one utilization equipment. So you can take two hots and a neutral and take a neutral to one piece of equipment. I'm not sure what, that's an exception. Oh, the rule was, we didn't have the rule here in C. Probably should add the text of the C of the rule. The text of C of the rule says that a multi-wire branch circuit um, is only permitted, is, is permitted, not permitted to supply, line, line to only, what, only permitted to uh, sign line the neutral line loads, neutral not load. line to line loads, but there is an exception that you can supply line to line loads when it's going to be to one piece of equipment, like a range, a dryer, an oven, you know. Uh, multi-wire branch circuits grouping. We kind of talked about the identification of grouping of neutral conductors and circuits. Now this is about the grouping of multi-wire branch circuits. So here's two multi-wire branch circuits. Wait a second. Is it two multi-wire? The phase and neutral conductor of a multi-wire branch circuit must be identified or grouped together by cable ties. In similar means by 200.4b. So that was the, the circuit. So you have to group your multi-wire branch circuit. I, I think something that might make this a little clearer for somebody that's new to this, a multi-wire branch circuit is just a circuit. It's no different than a non-multi-wire branch circuit, which is why it's important to group the neutral with the multi-wire branch circuit, just like you would group a neutral with any other branch circuit. So if you look at this example here, if I ask the question, how many circuits 
are in this panel, the answer is what? Two. Two. Two, two. two circuits. Right. right. Even though there are two circuits. Two one's circuits. a multi-wire and one's just a regular branch circuit. Perfect. Moving on. Uh, there's another hazard of multi-wire branch circuit. Let me rephrase that. There's another hazard of running a common neutral with multiple circuits. See, a multi-wire branch circuit, you have to have them either on the same two-pole breaker or three-pole breaker, or they have to be single-pole breaker with handle ties. So they end up inherently being grouped, right? We, we don't have a choice there. Well, if you put them on single-pole breakers, then you can, like you said, come off panel one, panel <coughs> two, or come off of this bus over here, and then come off of the bus down here. And so they're not, they're not going to be, you can't simultaneously open them. So therefore, the result is, instead of 10 amps, what do we have here? We have 20 amps on one line, and we have 15 amps on the other line. The neutral, if it were a multi-wire branch circuit, would be what? Five, Five. amps. But since they're not, the current, the current's not canceling. We covered this in electrical fundamentals and how that cancels. Well, now it's going to be additive. I remember distinctly for the first time when I was an electrician working, looking at a panel, and all the wires were white. <laughs> and I noticed one wire was not white like the other white wires, but it was like darker when it got to the terminal, and then eventually went to white, but it kind of like had like a, a brownish look to it. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Originally? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. And I'm looking at them like, Hmm, that's funny. And I just do, 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 walked on in my own little world. I never thought about, why don't you put an amp meter on that little puppy and, and, and find out how many amps it's drawing because there's a reason that it's brown. It's because it's heating up. If I had like a little scanner and I could thermal imaging, I could look at that. I can see that one wire is overloaded. That means what? Hey, how many times have you guys in here, because we all worked as, we all worked as electricians, were trying to balance a panel because the homeowner, I remember in the 70s, they had like a 100 amp panel or a 60 amp panel, and you want to change the whole service. There's no need to do it. You put an amp meter on line one, <coughs> amp meter on line two, and you find out line one's drawing 60 amps and line two is drawing 20 amps. And you're like, you know what? Let me just kind of move the circuits around here and make it, like say, 30 and 30 and save the person for a whole service change, at least for right now, just to kind of help. Well, guess what? I never knew. We did not have common handle ties on circuits. We did not know anything about the grouping of the neutral conductors. I just took a wire off of one phase, took it off of here, and I just moved them all around until like, okay, perfect. I didn't think so about it. In other words, you were fixing one problem and creating another one. Yeah, I was, I was preventing. There was no problem, but I was creating a problem, right? Because I'm like, I got, you know why, Jennifer? What happened? What did I do? You didn't read instructions? No. no. Oh. I got creative. <laughs> creative. <laughs> Don't get creative, Mike. I know. Too late. No. So here's the problem with the multi-wire brand circuits is that somebody are, that doesn't understand the multi-wire brand circuits and the hazards. And that's why we have the grouping and that's why we have simultaneous <laughs> disconnecting means to try to prevent it. Brian, it's okay. And like Brian is saying, listen, we're putting in multi-wire brand circuits. But if you want to pay for me to put bigger pipes, more wires, and pay for more copper... Like, if you work for Eric, idea. if you, you work for Eric, on? unlimited budget, well, then it's perfect. Good idea, yeah. Eric, talking about you. What is your feeling? Do you guys allow multi-wire brand circuits in the special? Yes, <clears throat> yes, we do. Our, our engineering standards used to disallow multi-wire brand circuits, but that was based on IEEE Emerald Book, which is the uh, sense called sensitive electronic components. Yeah. So with multi-wire brand circuits, if you have laboratory sensitive laboratory equipment, say on phase A, but you have something on phase B switching on or off, it can cause voltage differences. And so we used to have a blanket. Um, statement saying no multiwire. Since then, that statement's been changed, and it said we don't use multiwire in laboratories with sensitive equipment, but for pretty much everything else, we allow it. Yeah, the practical thing is let's let's be practical here. We don't we don't have to be like perfect. 